All right, you're scuba diving in the ocean, watching corals and colorful fish flitting by, when suddenly an enormous shadow appears above you. You look up and see a massive creature approaching you, its mouth a gaping abyss. Relax, just stay still and you'll be fine. This leviathan is a basking shark, one of the scary sea monsters that isn't really capable of doing harm to anyone. Basking sharks are filter feeders, just like baleen whales. They open their large mouths to swallow plankton and don't even have teeth. It's late night in the Central American jungle. You're out in the wild to watch birds and you hear flapping of wings. Excited, you look intently into your night vision goggles only to see a face out of your worst nightmares. Ah, don't scream, you'll scare it away! It's a perfectly harmless, wrinkle-faced bat, and it isn't interested in you. These are fruit bats, and wrinkles on their faces allow them to collect fruit pieces and juice for later snacks. By the way, their Latin name, Centurocenex, was given to them for their semblance to 100-year-old humans. Walking around a Nepali National Park and deciding to wash your face in the river nearby, you freeze in terror. A crocodile is looking straight at you from no more than a few feet's distance. Then it raises its snout above the water and you exhale in relief. It's a gharial. These reptiles have long and narrow snouts that allow them to efficiently catch fish and at the same time prohibiting them from hunting any other prey. While still carnivores, gharials are pretty shy and will slither away at the sight of humans. Right now, there are no more than a thousand of these crocodilians in the whole world. So let it go. Especially if it's a girl gharial. (laughs) You dig your garden in the backyard and notice something moving on your shovel. You take a closer look and drop the tool in horror. A small creature looking like a hostile alien is scurrying away into some burrow in the ground. Eh, no worries. It's just a star-nosed mole. These critters have peculiar snouts that look like they've been blown up from within. Their eyes are small and weak, so the star on their nose helps them a lot to move around and seek food. It's always on the move, touching everything it can reach as if the tendrils were tiny fingers. Oh, you're bathing in the ocean again. Well, look to your right, there's a real toothed shark going right at you. Nah, don't panic. It's just a sand tiger shark. Neither a sand nor a tiger one, it's a vulnerable fish-eating shark that slowly swims in the seas and chases its prey from time to time. There have been no reports of it ever attacking humans, but it still has rows of sharp teeth. So don't try to touch it just in case. It may seem placid, but you don't want it to get a bite out of you, do you? Okay, from ocean to desert, you're in Australia and longing for some water. You see a likely spot and start digging the ground only to stumble upon a creature straight from the depths of neither, all covered in thorns. It eyes you suspiciously and slinks away because it's just a thorny devil. Despite its ominous name, this lizard is harmless to humans. Horn-like bumps on its skin are for protection from predators and birds of prey. The thorns are hard, but as long as you don't touch them, you're fine. Now, if you have arachnophobia, it won't calm you down. But tailless whip scorpions you might meet in North and South America, as well as Asia and Africa, are more afraid of you than you are of them. Eh, Tell yourself that. These nightmarish creatures don't have stingers and won't even bite when threatened. The worst they could do, and only if you corner them, why would you do that, is prick you with their front legs, leaving tiny puncture marks on your finger. Many people even keep them as pets, and they're quite affectionate toward their owners. Yeah. If you ever stumble upon a burrow from which a hairless, big-toothed creature is speaking at you, just don't mind it and let it be. Naked mole rats are the sphinx cats among rodents. They're close relatives of mole rats, but, well, naked. And they're fascinating in their own right, too, thanks to living entirely underground. They're almost totally cold-blooded, but can conform to any temperature outside. And their flappy, wrinkled skin doesn't feel any pain at all, 
So pins and prickles, as well as sharp teeth, don't scare naked mole rats. You're once again lost in the jungle, this time on Madagascar. Poor you. The night has fallen, and you seek shelter. But when you think you've found a suitable tree to build a lean-to, you freeze in terror. A black, long-fingered hand appears on a tree branch right above you, and two huge yellow eyes are staring you down. Then you see a shaggy face and realize it's just a lemur. An eye-eye, more precisely. This creature is native to Madagascar and only goes out at night, so you're lucky to see it. It fulfills a role of a woodpecker in tropical forests. It knocks on tree trunks to find bugs and uses its long, wizened fingers to reach inside. Tired of being scared, you seek your way home, but your horrors aren't over yet. There's a big red and white snake across your path. It hisses and lies in wait for you to move. You know it's a coral snake, a really dangerous, venomous kind. You stop in your tracks, and only when it finally slithers away, you realize it was actually a milk snake. They often mimic venomous ones, not only coral snakes, to protect themselves from predators. Still, if you're not a snake expert, it's always best to stay away. Okay, this creature will infest your darkest dreams. A giant African millipede. It's big, it's glossy black, and it has hundreds of tiny crawly legs. And yet, if it had googly eyes, it could even be cute. Perhaps that's why so many people keep them as pets. That, and because they commonly live up to 10 years. Giant millipedes can't really bite. Their only defense is curling into a tight ball and secreting irritating liquid from the pores of its skin. If you dare touch it, don't rub your eyes or nose afterwards. It's quite unpleasant. Goliath Bird Eater is another popular pet creepy crawler. It isn't dangerous for humans, despite it looking like your worst nightmare. This is one of the largest spiders in the world, and as its name implies, it sometimes hunts small birds for food. But they aren't part of its regular diet. The spider prefers worms and amphibians. Make sure you don't frighten it, though. It can still bite or release hairs in self-defense. The bite is similar to a wasp sting, and hairs can cause severe irritation on your skin. But mostly, this gentle giant is just shy and will crawl away at the sight of you. Oh dear, there's another snake approaching you, and fast! You're about to turn and run when you see a hulking eight-legged form cutting into the snake's path and leaping on it. It's another arachnid, and it looks even more terrifying than the snake. It's a camel spider. Not really a spider, nor a scorpion. These creatures belong to a separate family. They became the stuff of many urban legends, but in fact, they don't even have any venom. Sure, they can bite, and their jaws are pretty powerful, but camel spiders can't do much more to a human than just bite. They hide in the sand and burrow to leap on unsuspecting lizards, invertebrates, and yes, even snakes. And now, picture a pill bug. Not exactly a beauty, but since it's small, it's okay. But what if it were 10 times as large? No, definitely not okay. Still, such a creature exists, and it's a giant isopod. Thankfully, it lurks in deep, dark, and cold waters, so it won't ever come up in your backyard. Giant isopods grow to such enormous size because of something called deep-sea gigantism. Deep-dwelling creatures have to endure great pressure of water, extreme cold temperatures, and scarce food, so their metabolism slows down. Isopods don't move much, and more often than not, just lie in wait until some poor small bug or crustacean crawls within their reach and they can munch on it. And though it looks like a many-legged chaos from below, a giant isopod can hurt you even if it wanted to. Just pet it already. It was the summer of 1949. Young geologist Vadim Kolpakov was on a mission to Siberia. His job was to draw a geological map of the area. While on duty, he came across something so mysterious and remarkable, it continued to puzzle experts decades later. Though it's now more famous as the Potomsky Crater, locals had dubbed it Fire Eagle Nest, probably because it looks like a giant bird nest sitting on the hill. 
But what was hiding inside would be the most surprising and baffling discovery. Well, if you could get close enough to uncover its secrets. According to the locals, even wild animals are scared to go near it. Kolpakov began walking towards it slowly. From far away, it looked like a giant bird nest indeed. The closer he got, the bigger it became. The crater appeared to be fresh. It was also deserted. Trees didn't grow on the slopes of this natural structure, and the winds didn't carry enough soil to make plant growth possible. As for animals, none in sight. He climbed all the way to the top and discovered something unbelievable. It was so hot that he felt the sweat running down his forehead. It was as if he was close to a fire source. His first thought was that this thing is volcanic. When he looked down, he was met with a perfectly circular mound in the middle. The round hump in the center of the crater was around the height of your standard telephone pole. Such things don't appear in volcanoes, even in extinct ones. And there aren't any around here that link to this peculiar mount. Unable to solve the strange appearance of the bad place, Kolpakov went back home and told everyone about his discovery. What was once a local anomaly would soon become a worldwide mystery. The whole scientific community started digging and coming up with theories. A lot of experts agreed this must have been the work of a meteorite. So they ran tests to see if a meteorite impact could create this double mound structure. The findings? The crater was likely formed by a falling, somewhat spherical object made from a dense material that could only exist in space. More experiments found that it wasn't just one object falling from space, but two. When the first meteorite hit the Earth, it exploded and formed the crater. Then the second object followed, but it was slowed down by the first impact and sunk deep into the ground. But others objected, claiming that meteorites can't fly one after the other and hit the planet in the exact same spot. With so many questions still unanswered, more experts came to the Siberian taiga to take a shot at solving the mystery. One of them studied tree's rings and collected wood samples. They figured out that the crater likely appeared about 300 years ago. They also discovered that vegetation in this spot grew way faster than usual. After ruling out other growth-boosting factors, like better soil content and more sunshine for some period, the only guess they were left with was radiation. Yes, the experts knew that when exposed to high doses of radiation, trees and plants grow faster. But the radiation levels on and around the crater were low. At some point in the last 300 years or so, there must have been radioactive material in the area. Was it a space rock? A unique type of volcano? All theories and no conclusions. Expeditions continue to this day in search of answers. Hmm, looking for something slimy? Well, many people tend to believe that snails are just slugs with shells. But even though they look so similar, they're completely different species. Slugs don't need any protective shells, as all their internal organs are, well, internal, inside their slimy bodies. They can squish themselves and get into hard-to-reach places, which is why slugs can often be found in the most unlikely spaces, like under tree bark, or inside tiny crevices, or at the library pretending to study for exams. Snails, on the other hand, are tightly connected with their shells and can't survive without one. Unlike hermit crabs, which replace their shells as they grow, snails are born with a shell on their back. Baby snails look adorable with those fragile translucent bubbles that calcify and become bigger and tougher with age. Cute? Well, you be the judge. Many of the snail's internal organs are inside the shell too, meaning that if it gets crushed or damaged, well, the animal would probably not survive. Still, a snail can repair small scratches and cracks in the shell with the help of proteins and calcium secreted by its mantle. Now, turtles are very close to snails in this regard, by the way, because contrary to common myth, they can't leave their shell at a whim either. A turtle shell is an integral part of its body, and despite the reptile being able to hide its head and paws inside to protect itself from predators, its skeleton is fused with the hard shell, 
And just like any other animal skeleton, it grows with the turtle itself. Now, koalas do only eat eucalyptus leaves, but there are over 600 different kinds of those. And koalas only munch on 30, or just 5% of what's available on the menu. So it has to be a very specific eucalyptus tree to make a good meal for a picky koala. These adorable creatures also have something in common with domestic cats. They sleep for 18 to 20 hours a day. Polar bears aren't at all white. Their skin is black under the fur. They need the white color to disguise themselves while on the hunt. The color black absorbs the sun better than any other, while white fur doesn't stop sunlight. Rays pass right through it. In a sense, a polar bear has transparent fur. There's a myth that dogs and cats see the world in black and white. In reality, they just can't distinguish some colors. Nobody knows how exactly dogs see. Some think they only distinguish two colors. Could be blue and yellow, for all we know. But they can see shades of other colors better than people. And cats have wonderful night vision. They need about seven times less light than a human to see in the dark. Now, giraffes were thought to be mute. But recently, it's been found that they make low-frequency sounds at night to communicate with each other. During the day, they don't say a word and warn each other of danger in a very unusual way by moving their well-developed eyebrows. It's likely that at night, it's difficult to see the eyebrows, so they start talking for real. While we're on the topic of giraffes, these animals sleep much more than 30 minutes a day, but probably not as much as you do. Their sleeping pattern is quite typical. After researchers monitored a herd of giraffes, they found out they slept at night and took short naps in the afternoon. In total, each giraffe had around 5 hours of sleep every day. Oh, and by the way, a herd of these guys is actually known as a tower of giraffes. Makes sense with the long necks. Seagulls can drink seawater. There are salt secreting glands near their eyes. These glands purify seawater very quickly, and the salty residue comes out through the nostrils. Yep, you guessed it, salty snot. The Adelie penguins are real romantics. They only have one partner for life. The male must give a smooth stone to the female to create a family. You could say that's kind of an engagement ring. Like humans, though, a female penguin may refuse and not accept the ring. Hmm. Speaking of animal love, foxes are romantic too. Male foxes are good fathers and husbands. They're devoted to their loved ones for life. They look after the females and even pick fleas from their fur. Ah. Male foxes improve their whole houses and take an active part in their baby's upbringing. Dolphins can sleep with one eye closed and the other one open. Half of the brain dreams and rests, yes. and the second half closely monitors the environment for signs of danger. The perfect brain for sleeping during boring classes and meetings. Hey, I didn't say that. Besides, dolphins manually control their breathing. They can simply drown if their whole brain is sleeping. Sea otters are the cutest sleepers among all animals. In the summer, because of the heat, sea otters spend all the time in water. They swim on their backs and sleep in that position. The babies are sleeping on their mother's stomach, and two adults hold each other by the paws so that they're not carried apart by water currents. Ostriches don't stick their heads in the sand when threatened. In fact, these guys don't bury their heads at all. This myth has spread thanks to that famous idiom to hide one's head in the sand. In real life, ostriches have to dig holes in the sand for their eggs because they're flightless birds. To make sure they're evenly heated, ostriches put their heads in there to rotate the eggs from time to time. But ostriches still have some escaping mentality. When they face some threat, they can flop to the sand and stay perfectly still, pretending they aren't alive. Now, according to a popular misbelief, Sharks can breathe only while moving because swimming helps them push water over their gills. Although many kinds of sharks are designed this way, many others, like bottom-dwelling nurse sharks, don't need swimming to pump oxygen-rich water over their gills. Meanwhile, all sharks do lack swim bladders, so if they stop swimming, they'll probably sink to the bottom. But luckily, a shark's body can't be compressed. That's why rapid descents or ascents are safe for them. Scientists from Japan played audio recordings for cats to prove they're truly dismissive. In those recordings, the owners of the cats called them by their names. Cats' pupils dilated, 
the animals move their tails, legs, or ears. Cats heard people, but rarely responded. It's all about evolution. Cats came to people because they were attracted by mice that ate grains. They lived close to people, but were never tame. And yet, we keep feeding them. Birds are actually the only surviving dinosaurs. They evolved from theropods, the dinosaurs that ran on two legs. Yep, T. rex is a distant relative of chickens, ostriches, and even hummingbirds. In reality, flamingos are white. The bird turns pink due to beta-carotene. This pigment is found in the algae and the shrimp that it feeds on. You can change your color too. If you eat a lot of carrots, your skin will turn slightly orange. This will happen because of the high beta-carotene content in the vegetable. Sailors from all over the world talked about the giant squid they met on their voyages. For many years, scientists considered monsters with long tentacles to be a myth. But in 2004, the first photo of a giant squid was taken. They actually exist. Scientists have registered an animal that has grown to 43 feet. Mosquitoes actually bite some people more than others. The most delicious humans are those with type O blood. Also, these insects have really good eyesight. They're attracted by green, black, and red colors. So check the color of your clothes before you go camping. You can actually put a shark in a trance for 15 minutes. To do this, you need to stroke the nose of a dangerous animal with your hand. This sort of hypnosis is called tonic immobility that happens thanks to the receptors in the shark's nose. When stroked, the receptors send a lot of signals and the shark's brain is unable to process them all. Now, what it doesn't say here is exactly how you get close enough to a shark to rub its nose. I'd say that's important information, don't you think? Elephants aren't afraid of mice per se, but these massive animals have bad vision. They also move fairly slowly. That's why they can get startled by a bird or a small creature, like a mouse darting past them. Just the element of surprise, nothing more. The chameleon can change its color, but this creature doesn't do it to camouflage itself. The color change helps the animal regulate its temperature and communicate with peers. Now, when most dogs pant, their tongues hang out of their mouths. That's why many people think that's how they sweat. In reality, dog sweat glands are located on their paw pads. Plus, there are other sweat glands all over their bodies. Dogs pant to evaporate moisture from their nasal passages, tongues, and the lining of their lungs. This also helps to cool them down. You might leave wasps alone, but don't be so sure they'll do the same. Bees do respect human boundaries, and if you don't bother them, they won't hurt you. But wasps are so bad-tempered, they can sting you even if you're just walking by their nest. Well, phooey on them! Yep, your brain will grow by roughly 2% if you venture into space. Under normal gravity, it is thought that fluid in the brain naturally moves downwards when we stand upright. But there is evidence that lack of gravity prevents this which is why fluid accumulates in the brain and skull. While a bunch of flowers may be fragrant for you, there are people with cacosmia who would beg to differ. They perceive all the smells out there as something odorous. Well, that stinks. Speaking of which, out of all the senses we have, smell is the most acute one. We remember 65% of smells after a year, but only 50% of what we've seen over the last three weeks. We also get a new nose every 28 days, because the nose cells are renewed every 4 weeks. We don't smell when we sleep. Well, of course, unless you haven't bathed in a while. Your sense of smell goes to sleep when you do, which is why it's almost impossible to notice a gas leak at night. While sleeping, we rely only on sound because the sleep can be disrupted by noise. Almost half of your taste buds will have gone away by the time you turn 60. So, maybe, you will finally start eating those broccoli! Your sense of smell gets less acute as you get older as well. As for taste again, we mostly rely on our smell, since it helps us perceive up to 95% of the flavor. Without the sense of smell, it'd be hard to tell an apple from a turnip. Now, when you cough, you release the air at about 60 miles per hour, so mind the speed limit. Hiccups is a two-step process. First, you draw in a lot of air because of a muscle spasm, and then bang! The airways are closed, the air is blocked, and the famous sound goes outside. 
We need ears, not only for hearing, but for balance, too. Our vestibular system occupies the inner ear. Canals in your inner ear contain fluid and tiny sensors helping you keep the balance. By the way, ears have bones. These are also the only bones that never grow. We can hear thanks to these little guys since they transmit sound vibrations. Doctors call them oscular chain, and it's made up of malleus, incus, and stapes, nicknamed hammer, anvil, and stirrup, which are integral parts of the middle ear. Our ears keep growing throughout our lives. They sweat too, and earwax is actually a kind of sweat they produce. Oh, by the way, the nose never stops growing either. Perhaps from all the lies. <laughs> Your heart is the only muscle that never gets tired. The aorta is massive. Its diameter is almost as large as a hose in your garden. All the bones in our body are connected to each other except for the hyoid, which doesn't articulate with the other bones. This bone serves as support to your tongue, and it's one of the rarest bones to break. If you have red eyes in a photo, blame it on bouncing light. The flash jumps off the capillaries in your retina, creating that effect. As for eyes, the coolest camera so far has 200 megapixels. The human eye has 576. That's why sunsets are so much better in real life than in photos. A roller coaster actually tosses your organs around. When you feel like your stomach's falling down, it's really flipping inside your body. Lips are much more sensitive than fingers, having around a million nerve endings. They are 100 times as sensitive as the tips of the fingers. Grooves and furrows make our lip print unique, just like fingerprints are. They also remain unchanged throughout our life. Oh, the tongue print is unique too, by the way. Even though all the people on Earth have an absolutely unique smell, identical twins smell exactly the same. It must be because they have identical genes. Usually, we shed about 50 to 150 hairs a day. An average lifespan for hair is 5 years, and as soon as an old hair says goodbye to your scalp, a new one starts growing immediately. In your body, you carry enough bacteria to fill a can. Bacteria makes about 3 to 5 pounds of your weight, representing 2% of your total weight. Still, most of them are the waste that our body has. A human being has about 20,000 to 25,000 genes. Seems impressive, right? Well, cornflakes have more genes than we do. Luckily, it's about sophistication, not the quantity. Anyway, cornflakes one, humans zero. We consist of many chemical elements, including iron. The iron in our bodies is enough to produce three nails, each one inch long. The carbon that we have can be used for 900 pencils. Our feathers can be used to make quill pens. Wait, that's birds. Never mind. Our liver has a superpower of regenerating if part of it was removed. It can grow back to the size that your body needs. Fat helps our bodies consume vitamins. Such vitamins as A, D, K, and E can be properly absorbed only when fat dissolves. Our bodies have enough fat to produce 7 bars of soap. Uh, don't try this at home. When we're awake, our brain may produce enough energy to turn an electric bulb on. It has 10 watts of power. What's that about? Our belly buttons have an entire animal encyclopedia in them, with a range of about 70 different bacteria. Some of them can be also found in the soil of Japan and even in polar ice caps. Our bodies actually glow. Anyway, we can't see that with an unaided eye because the light we emit is 1,000 times less intense than the minimum level we can perceive. Speaking of which, carmine used blushes and lipsticks is red dye made up of ground-up beetles. Oh. Saliva helps to taste food. Our taste buds are ready to perceive it only when it's dissolved by saliva. An eyelash is here to stay for 150 days only. The world eyelash record was about 3 inches long. They're also home for tiny mites. We blink about 4,200,000 times a year, at least once every 8 seconds. Could be cool if we were given a cent every time we blink. We could make more than $100 daily. It may sound crazy, but our bones are stronger than lots of building materials. 
a cubic inch of human bone can bear about 19,000 pounds, making it four times stronger than concrete. The only thing that makes our blood type different is sugar. A, B, and AB types have sugars, while O has none, which makes it perfect for donors. No sugar doesn't make O type less sweet. In fact, it attracts mosquitoes even more than the other blood types. People have only 8 blood types, while cows have 800 and possibly more. Like what? Moo positive and moo negative? Our fingernails grow way faster than toenails. They grow almost four times slower because they have less damage than fingernails. Even though we stumble on them often, sudden circulation bursts usually don't last long. Nails don't only help us catch random tiny objects and peel the stickers off. If you didn't have a rigid structure against which to press, you wouldn't be able to judge how firmly to hold anything. Very few people can actually digest milk. The thing is, there's some special enzyme, let's call it a little helper, that breaks down the sugars any milk has. When people grow up, they run out of this enzyme. This sugar's called lactose, so adults that can't digest it are lactose intolerant. 68% of the world's population can actually digest milk. If you're sleeping, it doesn't mean your whole body rests. In fact, sometimes your brain has to work even harder when you're asleep. It needs to process tons of information, and reports usually take a lot of time. Humans can't multitask. Really. We need time to switch from one task to another, but if we try to tackle several things at the same time, it's not going to be very productive. Try this one. Lift your right foot and start rotating it in a clockwise direction. Try to write the number 6 with your big toe in the air. Now, check the direction your foot's moving. It's moving in the opposite direction, because to write the number 6, you need to make a counterclockwise movement. It actually takes a bit longer to start a new habit. It's not 100% true that 18 or 21 days are enough, as many people think. The process of getting a new habit can take up to 254 days, but on average, it takes around 66 days for a new habit to become automatic. Wow! Just one strand of hair can support about 3 ounces. On average, a person has about 150,000 strands. And when your hair is working as a team, it can support about 12 tons. That's two elephants. Um, not counting the peanuts. Your brain generates electricity, and it'd be enough to light up a small light bulb, if you could only figure out how. It doesn't hurt to cut your nails or hair, because the only part that's alive is under the skin. Also, nails grow faster in summer than in winter, even in places where there's not much difference between the seasons. Also, nails grow faster on your writing hand, probably because you use it more often and that stimulates the nails more. It looks like the pinky finger is weak, but that's not true at all. Without it, you'd lose 50% of your hand strength. It usually works together with your ring finger to provide power. The other three are more for grabbing stuff. Oh, and just like fingerprints, your tongue has a unique print too. But you can't use it to unlock your phone, at least not yet. Also, your tongue has a lot of fat in it. If you gain weight, your tongue does too. There's acid in your stomach that breaks down food. The acid is so strong that it could eat right through a piece of wood. The total length of all blood vessels in an adult is close to 100,000 miles. That's four times around the equator. In your lifetime, you produce enough saliva to fill two swimming pools. Our ancestors needed goosebumps to make their body hair stand on end and scare away any bad guys. We don't need that anymore, but we still get them because we haven't evolved enough yet to get rid of this feature. Now, you've probably never noticed, but you mostly only breathe through one nostril at a time. Every few hours, the nostrils switch jobs. That's why only one nostril gets stuffy when you have the flu. Most people think they have five senses, but that's not true. Scientists don't yet know themselves, but they think there's more than 20. There's sight, hearing, touch, smell, and taste. And there are other senses like time, hunger, and thirst. Then there's proprioception, the sense of where your body is in space. The brain can't always tell the difference between intense happiness and intense sadness. 
it gets that you're experiencing a very strong emotion, but sometimes it gets a bit confused. That's why you might cry when you're very happy. Your eyes stay about the same size your whole life, but your nose and ears don't. That'd be so weird. Back in the day, all humans had brown eyes. Other eye colors developed as a result of a random mutation. Scientists think that while the first humans appeared on Earth around 6 million years ago, the first blue-eyed person appeared only 10,000 years ago. So it's pretty likely that all blue-eyed people on the planet have the same ancestor. Uncle Bob! All bones in the human body are connected to each other except one. The hyoid bone is U-shaped and located at the base of the tongue, holding it in place. Bones are stronger than steel. A strong, healthy bone could, in theory, handle the weight of five pickup trucks. Still, they're not the strongest body part. The strongest is tooth enamel. It's made of a bunch of different materials that make it damage-resistant. Teeth live a long time, lasting for hundreds of years. But of course, you still need to take care of them. They're the only body part that can't heal itself. Your heart works non-stop and beats around 3 billion times over the course of your lifetime. Just like your heart, your tongue never takes a vacation. Even when you sleep, it helps push saliva down your throat. By the way, where do you rest your tongue? If you keep it on the bottom of your mouth, you're doing it wrong. This posture might lead to some neck and jaw pain. If you keep it jammed up against your teeth, you're doing it wrong too. It can cause your teeth to shift and might lead to a bad bite. Instead, try to keep it sort of halfway, about a half an inch away from your teeth. Now, we can't breathe and swallow at the same time. That's because whatever we swallow and the air we breathe travel down the same path, at least at first. It's like there's a little guy directing traffic down there. Your eyes can breathe. The cornea is the only body part that doesn't have a direct blood supply. It gets oxygen right from the air. That's why when it's dry outside, your eyes might get a bit itchy. Everyone dreams. Some people say they've never dreamt a night in their life, but they just never remember any of their dreams. Some scientists think that the dreaming stage is followed by an active forgetting stage. It's probably because dreams aren't exactly full of important information, and our brain needs to clean up some extra space for something more useful. Those who are lucky enough to remember their dreams still end up forgetting about half within 5 minutes of waking up, and after 10 minutes, it's usually gone for good. When you blush, the lining of your stomach turns red too. It happens because blood starts to flow around more when you're embarrassed, as your body gets ready for something stressful to happen. Your face and stomach lining get more of it, turning them red. Also, humans are the only animals who can blush, or at least the only ones where you can see it so obviously. During one lifetime, the average human grows 590 miles of hair. The average man, if he never shaved, would have a 30-foot-long beard. Hair grows a little faster in warm climates because heat stimulates faster circulation in our bodies. Everything you'd ever need to know about you is all written down in one strand of hair. From a single hair, a scientist could tell you what you've been eating your whole life and what kind of environment you've lived in. On average, one human eats their way through 100,000 pounds of food in one lifetime. That's like 10 big hippos worth of food. Lips are one of the most sensitive parts of the human body. They have loads of nerve endings, even more than your fingers. Also, lip skin is very thin, so you can actually see the blood capillaries inside. That's why lips are red or pink, unlike the rest of your body. Lips are also very sensitive to sun damage, so remember to apply sunscreen on them. It'll help to preserve their health and fullness over time. In addition to your fingerprints, your iris, and your tongue, your lips are also unique. The total surface of your lungs is about the same as a tennis court. <coughs> Coughs and sneezes are real fast travelers. A cough can get up to 50 miles per hour. A sneeze is even faster, almost 100 miles per hour. Unless you use your fingers to help you, it's impossible to sneeze with your eyes open. Scientists don't really know what's going on there. Some say it's just a reflex, so you can't control it. Others think it happens to shield your eyes from whatever's flying out. All humans literally glow. 
The light comes from your body heat. It's actually a thousand times less intense than you're capable of seeing, but still awesome. The largest flash drive in the world is actually your brain. Well, anyone's brain. The neurons in it combine together in such a way that your storage capacity is about a million gigabytes. It's enough to hold 3 million hours of movies. That's like a 300-year-long movie night. Hey, pass the popcorn! You start feeling thirsty when you lose about 1% of your body weight. If you lose 5%, you might even feel like fainting. Fingers don't have muscles that make them move. The muscles that do that are located in the palm and the forearm. The word muscle actually comes from the old Latin word for mouse. That's what the Romans thought their biceps looked like. On average, in their lifetime, a person walks about 110,000 miles. That's four times the distance around our planet, or half the distance from the Earth to the moon. So, remember to wear comfortable shoes. Marsupials, animals with pouches on their bellies, usually have them facing upwards, but not wombats. These toothy critters like digging too much, which is why their pouches are turned down to their hind paws. This way, they can dig without harming their babies. By the way, all marsupial cubs are called joeys. That includes kangaroos, koalas, and of course, wombats too. Spiders have a tiny brain, but their web is a powerful tool. They use it to see, hear, and feel everything around. Crazier still, the web also serves as a kind of a memory bank. Instead of remembering where they stashed the prey, spiders leave it to the web. Kangaroo rats can survive for years without water at all. They get all the moisture they need from seeds they eat, and living in an arid desert doesn't cause them any trouble. Plumed basculus lizards can run on water. Their hind feet have long toes with fringes of skin spreading out in water. As a result, a bigger surface of the lizard's foot comes into contact with the water, and then the lizard has only to pump its legs real fast. When a cardinal fish guzzles too much special zooplankton, the tiny creature starts to glow inside the fish's body. It becomes more visible to predators and spits the plankton out, which looks as if it breathes out bursts of bluish fire. There's a particular jellyfish species in the world's oceans, which can live forever. When the creature reaches the end of its life, it transforms back into its polyp state and restarts its life cycle over and over again. Tarsiers have the biggest eye-to-body size ratio. Their eyes take up almost the whole head. In return, these huge eyeballs allow the animal to see at night as clearly as during the day. Gecko lizards are equipped with tiny hairs on their foot pads. These things let them climb any surface and run on it as if on the ground, even if it's your ceiling. The pistol shrimp gets its name from its weird claw. It's normally open, but when it snaps shut, it creates a bubble projectile that stuns its prey. The snap is so powerful, it creates a flash of light and momentarily heats up the water to the temperature of the sun's surface. A possum is any snake's natural nemesis. These creatures are immune to snake venom and like to munch on serpents a lot. Not to be confused with possums, though. When hippos get too hot, they ooze a pinkish liquid through their skin. It soon covers their bodies and protects them from sunburns. Meerkats, also seeing lots of sunny days, have black rings around their eyes that look like they're wearing sunglasses. And, well, it's exactly what those rings do. The black fur blocks out sunlight, allowing meerkats to look straight at the sky. Parrots, with their ability to mimic human speech, pale in comparison with lyre birds. These copycats can learn and produce over 20 different sounds, including chainsaws, dog barks, car engines, and fire alarms. And, of course, other bird songs too. The alpine ibex is the absolute climbing champion of the animal world. Mother goats with their kids seem to be defying gravity by scaling flat vertical cliff walls where no other creature can walk. Male goats, on the other hand, prefer flatlands themselves. Lizards are known to regrow their tails, and sometimes even other limbs, but the axolotl beat them all. These strange critters can regenerate even such complex organs as their heart or brain. Salmon, this graceful water racer, has a built-in navigation system. 
its body reacts to the magnetic field of the Earth and helps the fish find its way across thousands of miles. When threatened, bombardier beetles pop open the tip of their behind and spray the attacker with nauseous liquid. The chemical reaction inside the beetle's body makes this spray as hot as boiling water. Fleas may be small, but they're the best jumpers in all creation. If humans could jump like these tiny pests, we'd be able to hop over the top of the Eiffel Tower. Millipedes are scary enough by themselves, but some of their defense mechanisms are something else. For example, they might exude cyanide, burning in response to threat, and others can glow in the dark. Octopuses have three hearts, two of which pump blood to the gills, and the third one rolls it to the other organs. Their blood is blue, by the way, and they also have as many as nine brains. One is central, and the other eight are, you guessed it, controlling their limbs. Horses have frogs in their feet. No, not live ones. A horse's frog is a triangular organ that absorbs shock from stepping on the foot and helps pump blood from their feet up. On the topic of horses' feet, their hooves are made of the same stuff your nails and hair are, keratin. So, basically, horses run on their nails. The starfish doesn't have either brain or heart, and neither does it have lungs. Yet it has hundreds of tiny feet, allowing it to walk, and it also pumps water with them through the star's body. The water acts like blood for this creature. Giraffes are the shortest sleepers in the world. They only need two hours of quality sleep a day. And even that, they don't get at once, instead falling into short five-minute bouts of sleep. Cicadas have no natural enemies, but not because they're on top of the food chain. They go into slumber for as long as 13 to 17 years, and no animal can rely on them as a food source. Tiger stripes are just as unique as human fingerprints. And it's not only their fur that's striped, their skin is too. Speaking of fingerprints, if a koala leaves its prints on something, they might be confused with a person's. They're that much alike. There's no animal that can blush, except humans. Scientists believe this phenomenon is purely social, so that we could communicate with other people without words. There are also no animals in the world that have chins, except humans. This, however, still remains unexplained. Actually, it's so we can do chin-ups. Uh, maybe. Pygmy marmoset is the smallest monkey on the planet. It's so tiny, it could hug your thumb like a tree trunk. Sloths, with their unhurried way of life, can take a whole month to digest a single meal they've eaten. Cows have four stomachs. Well, not exactly. They have one stomach with four chambers. They need so many to process grass, something humans and predators can't do. Owls can't move their eyes in their sockets. That's why they have to turn their entire head to look around, and it rotates to almost 360 degrees. Mantis shrimp is one of the most colorful creatures in the world. They look rainbow color to us, but to those of their own species, they look like a whole burst of colors. Their eyes can detect billions more shades than ours. Snails might seem harmless and placid, but they have up to 15,000 teeth. Inside a snail's mouth, there are more tiny chompers than in a shark's one. Despite feeling smells much, much better than us humans, cats and dogs have a rather weak sense of taste. Dogs have about five times fewer taste buds than we do, and cats have just a few hundred compared to our 9,000. Orcas are some of the most intelligent creatures on the planet. They hear each other's calls over dozens of miles and have unique calls for every single one of their pack. These calls are similar to human names in function. A call of a blue whale can be heard over hundreds of miles, and if you're too close to a whale when it sounds a call, you might lose your hearing. It's louder than a jet engine. Reindeers change their eye color depending on the season. In summer, they're gold, and in winter, they're blue. Also, while reindeer's antlers are still growing, they're very sensitive. But when they're fully grown, they lost the outer skin layer and become hard like bone. Otters hold each other's paws while sleeping on the water, because otherwise, they might be separated by the currents. A hummingbird is a creature with the fastest metabolism on the planet. Its heart beats at the speed of over 1,200 beats per minute, 
that's more than 20 beats per second. And if you were a hummingbird, you'd have to eat about 50 to 60 pounds of food per day. An elephant's trunk is similar in structure to a human's tongue. It has lots of muscles interwoven with each other. That's why it's so flexible. Butterflies feel smells with the antenna on their heads, and females taste flowers with their feet before harvesting them. Bumblebees are so large compared to their wings, they shouldn't be able to fly at all. Still, their little wings move not up and down, but back and front, creating tiny hurricanes around the bumblebee and allowing it to kind of surf the air current. Now we know why they're so busy. Hey, check it out! Your bones are designed to be used a lot every day. Some of them can absorb the force of two or even three times your body weight. That's impressive, but your teeth are even stronger. When you bite something, they can withstand incredible pressure, up to 200 pounds. By the way, the enamel is considered to be a part of your skeletal system. Whenever you rotate your hand, the bones inside your forearm cross. Grab hold of your arm and turn your palm to face first upward and then downward. You'll make sure it's true. Not only is your body 60% water, your bones contain some liquid too. About 25% of the human bone mass is made up of water. The human eye has something in common with a car engine. They both can't work properly without various liquids. The eye needs tears as much as the engine needs oil. Tears should be evenly spread over the surface of your eye. That's why you blink up to 20,000 times a day. And your eyelid plays the role of a windshield wiper. The only part of the human body that doesn't get any nutrients from blood is the cornea, the clear front surface of the eye. Instead, it's fed by tears on the outside and special fluids on the inside. When you blush, it means there is increased blood flow in your body. And then, not only your cheeks, but also your stomach lining gets somewhat red. It's because it has plenty of blood vessels. When there's more blood than usual in them, the lining blushes. Your stomach lining gets replaced every 3-4 to four days. This prevents the organ from eating itself. The digestive acids there are exceptionally powerful. People can accidentally swallow small objects, such as glass, plastic items, coins, and many others. Normally, they don't cause any harm and pass through the digestive tract within 48 hours. Tiny quantities of plastic you might consume by mistake won't harm you. But your stomach will have problems with digesting grass. Grazing animals have special teeth and stomachs to process raw leaves and grass. People aren't equipped that way. The stomach is the most important protector of the immune system. It contains hydrochloric acid. This acid gets rid of dangerous food toxins, viruses, and bacteria that come along with the food you eat. The stomach itself would be digested by this strong acid if the mucous membrane didn't protect it. You've got two really fast muscles. They control your eyelids closing. They're the swiftest in your body. Your eyes are fragile and need protection. When a special reflex is triggered, for example, when something suddenly touches your eye, these muscles only need one-tenth of a second to shut the eyelids. Women usually blink more than men. Plus, the older you get, the more frequently you do it. By the way, when you watch a movie with a friend, you both blink in unison. Do you think you owe your firm handshake to your strength workouts? It's more likely thanks to your pinky. Eh, just kidding. And still, the pinky is the strongest finger out there. It's responsible for 50% of the entire hand strength. But the most used finger is the thumb. If a person loses it, their hand becomes 40% less agile. Oh, and the thumb has its own pulse, thanks to the artery running through it. Your big toes carry more than 40% of your weight, more than all the other toes combined. All in all, all your toes are a big deal. They provide support and balance when you walk. And when you run, they help you to be faster. No more than 2% of people have natural red hair. They're followed by blondes, about 3%, and all kinds of brown shades, about 11%. But the world's most common hair colors are black and dark brown. Hair is almost indestructible. It can be burned or affected by strong acids, but that's pretty much all you can do to destroy it. Your hair usually stops growing at a certain length, and since a hair lives for 2-7 to years, its length doesn't normally exceed 42 inches. (laughs) Tell that to this lady from China, 
who got to the Guinness World Records with the longest hair ever. In 2004, it was a bit more than 18 feet 5 inches long. Wow, what a drag! <laughs> nails can grow staggeringly long, too. Some of the longest nails in the world belong to this guy from India. Their combined length was 29 feet 10 inches, which is almost as long as a London double-decker. The man cut them off back in 2018. Nailed it! Nails do help us catch small objects and peel stickers off. But that's not all. If you didn't have a rigid structure to press against, you wouldn't be able to understand how firmly you should hold things. Not only your hair and nails, but also your liver can grow. It's the largest internal organ by mass. The liver can fully regenerate from only 51% of its original mass back to the full size. At the same time, constant damage to the liver will result in scars. The largest organ in your whole body is the skin. It makes up more than 15% of your total body weight. People lose 30,000 to 40,000 skin cells every single minute. It adds up to 9 pounds of skin cells a year. You know that dust in your house? Well, now you know where some of it comes from. The tongue isn't the only organ that helps you recognize taste. Your nose also plays a critical role in this process. It's often said the nose is responsible for 75-95% to 95% of your taste perception. Try holding your nose next time you eat. Gnaw on an onion or eat some smoked fish. It's not that you won't feel any taste at all, but it's going to be way blander. Your taste buds won't work properly if your mouth is too dry. You simply won't feel the taste until the food is covered in saliva. It contains enzymes, which are complex protein molecules. They start to break down your food as soon as it gets into your mouth. A recent study has found out that people can distinguish more than a trillion smells. You tend to remember odors better than sounds or images. That's why smells can evoke distant memories. When you're asleep, you don't feel any odors. Your sense of smell basically deactivates at night. Even if there's some terrible stench in your bedroom, you won't notice it. I'm sure my dog is relieved to hear that. The color of your dream seemed to be affected by the TV you watched as a kid. If it was black and white, you probably see monochrome dreams more often than not. If you're used to color television, your dreams are likely to be colorful. Hmm, what kind of dreams did people in the Middle Ages have then? Nights that say need? Your heart can give you away when you lie by starting to beat faster. Women's hearts are usually smaller than men's, that's why they have to work harder and make more beats. Otherwise, they won't be able to pump enough blood. Even if you brush your teeth twice a day and never forget about mouthwash, your mouth still remains one of the dirtiest parts of your body. Millions of bacteria live there. The good news is that most of them are good for your health. They protect your body from bad bacteria and viruses. The second dirtiest place is your belly button. You don't really use it after you were born. So this forlorn area accumulates all kinds of germ, sweat, and dirt. The belly button has over 2,300 bacterial species, and it does need extra attention. They say eyes don't grow with the rest of the body. Well, it's not 100% true, because the eyes aren't fully developed until you're about 21. But the absolute growth champions here are your ears and nose. They never stop growing. Wow. What was that thing about elephants again? Must have been a different video. If all your blood vessels were stretched into a single line, dang, you would be in a really tough spot. But they would go around the Earth four times. You can't tickle yourself, no matter how hard you try. You've just checked that and failed, haven't you? That's because your brain warns you that you're about to be tickled, which it can't do if it's someone else. <laughs> Ever wondered why you feel so sleepy after lunch? One of the reasons is your circadian rhythm, which runs on a 24-hour cycle. It demands that you have a nap 7 hours after waking up. And the food just adds to this effect. As simple as that. Oh, excuse me, it's time. It's normal for planets to be a bit tilted on the side. The Earth is tilted at a 23-degree angle. That's why we have seasons. It's summer when the part of the world where you are leans closer to the sun. 
It works the opposite way, too. It's winter when you lean away from it. But Uranus is tilted more than normal. It lies as a 98-degree angle, which has a huge effect on its seasons. Each season on Uranus takes 21 years to play out. Something to think about the next time we complain that winter lasts forever. Now, here on Earth, we measure distances in minutes and hours, maybe even days. It takes 10 minutes to walk to your best friend's house, or 15 minutes to drive to your favorite cafe. But in space, it's different. It's vast, which means we measure how long it takes to get to a certain point in years, or in most cases, light years. So, if you want to walk to the moon one day, that would take you 9 years to span the 239,000 miles. Perhaps you'd like to take a ride to the nearby star, Proxima Centauri. Maybe if you kept the pedal to the metal at a constant speed of 70 miles per hour, you'd get there in about 356 billion hours, or around 40 and a half million years. Trust me, after the first 20 million years, you'd be second-guessing yourself as to why go there in the first place. Now, Mars contains the biggest valley, Valles Marineris, we've discovered so far. It's a pretty impressive system of canyons, 2,500 miles long. It's five times longer than the Grand Canyon. Researchers first spotted it back in the 1970s. A bank of volcanoes located on the other side of the canyon ridge probably helped form this valley. We haven't discovered a planet completely made of diamonds yet, but on some planets, it actually rains diamonds. On Jupiter and Saturn, gas giants of our solar system, lightning storms turn abundant methane into soot, which we also know as carbon. The soot falls and transforms into graphite. Further graphite transforms into diamonds with a diameter of about 0.4 inches. Now, before you start figuring out how to book a diamond-collecting field trip, know that these diamonds don't last. After they enter the planet's core, they melt. Ever notice how when you're stargazing two nights in a row in the same time, let's say 9 p.m., the stars stay in the same place, but the moon doesn't? Well, there are two reasons for that. First, it depends on what time you go stargazing. For instance, if you go outside at 8 p.m. and tomorrow you look for it at 11 p.m., you'll see the moon in two pretty different places. In this case, even the stars take different places in the sky since our planet is spinning. As you know, it takes 24 hours for it to make one full circle. That means, from our point of view, it seems like both the sky and everything up there is just moving around us one time per 24 hours. In the same way, the sun changes its position, rising and setting every day. So, if you went outside two nights in a row at the same hour, in most cases, you'll have to wait for an extra half hour or more until the moon gets back to the same position as the night before. The stars are pretty much standing still. It seems like they're moving, but that's because the Earth is spinning. But the Moon is actually moving around our planet and goes through different phases. For example, a new moon is when it's completely dark in the sky. A full moon is when its day side is facing the Earth. It takes approximately a month for it to finish one circle around the Earth. Maybe you'd be luckier on a diamond-collecting expedition on this next planet, 40 million light-years away from Earth. Scientists used to call it a super-Earth. Now, a super-Earth is generally a planet way bigger than ours. This planet, for example, is double the Earth's size. It's so close to its star that it makes a full circle around it in less than 18 hours, which means a year there is pretty short. Since it's so close to its star, its temperature goes up a whopping 4,900 degrees Fahrenheit. Because of the heat, in combination with the planet's density, Scientists have the theory that its core is made of carbon in the form of graphite and diamonds. Over 10 years ago, astronomers discovered a huge water vapor cloud. It was 12 billion light years from our home planet. That cloud is the biggest source of water we know of. It's also the oldest, dating back to when the universe was only 1.6 billion years old. Now it's 13.8 billion years old. Man, if only I had started a savings account 12 billion years ago. With compound interest, I'd have me quite a pile of cash by now, but I wasn't around then. Anyway, this cloud is so large it holds 140 trillion times the amount of water in all the oceans on our planet. This cloud kind of feeds a black hole. It may also contain enough gases, such as carbon monoxide, to encourage the black hole to grow six times bigger than it is at the moment. The average temperature of our planet is about 57 degrees Fahrenheit. And the highest temperature ever measured was 134 degrees. Sound too hot? 
Well, on Venus, it can go up to 900 degrees, which makes it the hottest planet in our solar system. It's not hot enough to melt steel, though. It would need to be higher by 2,500 degrees to get there. But it's hot enough to melt lead. And it's way too hot to sustain life, at least not in any form that we know. Venus is not even the closest to the Sun, it's Mercury. But it has a super thick atmosphere that traps greenhouse gases. It's like you covering yourself with a pretty thick blanket in the middle of the summer. Now, we're used to seeing volcanoes spewing hot molten lava. After all, that's what they mostly do on Earth. But in space, volcanoes tend to spew methane, water, or ammonia. And these materials freeze as they erupt and eventually transform into frozen vapor and something called volcanic snow. I'm talking about cryovolcanoes here. You can find them on Jupiter's moons Io and Europa, Saturn's moon Titan, and Pluto. These volcanoes are especially active on Io, which has hundreds of vents. NASA vehicles have even captured some of these erupting in real time. Plumes of frozen vapor coming out of them extended for about 250 miles. Hey, by the way, they just discovered another moon around Jupiter that might actually be good for farming someday. It's named EIEIO. <laughs> now, what exactly happens to the light after it disappears inside of a black hole? Well, photon is a particle of light. The event horizon is the boundary of a black hole. When something, say a photon, crosses the line and enters those boundaries, it can't escape anymore. But it doesn't mean a black hole destroyed it. It pulls the photon in rapidly towards its center, where an enormous mass is packed into an infinitely small space. But we're not sure what happens to photons in such extreme conditions. It's still one of the biggest mysteries. Does a black hole destroy the light or not? Saturn has 82 moons we know about, 53 confirmed and 29 more that are still on the waiting list to be confirmed as actual moons before they get their official names. And one of the coolest moons might be a 914-mile-wide hunk of rock called Aepetus. It's dark on one side and bright on the other. Its lighter half is 20 times more reflective than the other one. As it turned out, the bright side is ice. The dark side is a bit more complicated. One theory says it's dark because of particles coming from another moon, the one named Phoebe. Another theory says it could be because of heat. Since the moon is rotating really slowly, its dark material is absorbing heat, which makes it even darker. Now, how big do you think a black hole can become? In theory, we can't find an upper limit to its mass. But astronomers believe the ultra-massive black holes, or UMBHs, located in the cores of certain galaxies are mostly up to 10 billion solar masses big. Recently, they even discovered these UMBHs physically can't grow much more than this because, in that case, they would start to disrupt the accretion disks that feed them. That way, they would kind of stuff the source of new material. Most people picture the universe as somewhere between aquamarine and pale turquoise. Even some researchers thought that was the case. They managed to determine the cosmic color by combining light from more than 200,000 galaxies within 2 billion light years of our planet. But the real color is actually closer to beige. Researchers got it all wrong because there was a bug in the software. No, really? <laughs> it converted the cosmic spectrum into the color our eyes would see if we were exposed to it. The team defined this color as a cosmic latte. Ooh, make that a double-shot low-fat large to go, please. Why is the myth dogs are colorblind so widely accepted? They do see colors even though they have a more limited spectrum than we do. They see blue, yellow, and violet pretty well, but it's hard for them to tell the difference between orange, red, and green. So, if you want to redecorate your dog's house, maybe you should stick to purple and blue shades. Animals, plants, and humans were all actually connected and have common traits because we've all evolved from the same micro-ancestor. This would be our planet's original ancestor, Luca. This stands for the last universal common ancestor, which is a 3.8 billion year old organism. Closing the eyes can improve your memory. Let's say you want to listen to a story and see how much you can remember. Studies show that if you close your eyes and take a 15 minute rest, you'll remember it better. A good technique for when you're studying or trying to remember some boring information. The pink corner of your eye is actually the remnant of the third eyelid. 
We all have this mysterious membrane. The third eyelid is way more prominent in certain mammals and birds since it protects their eyes from dust. But for humans, this tissue doesn't have any particular meaning, so scientists believe we'll eventually lose it. When potatoes are exposed to too much light, they mostly turn green, whether they're in a factory, storage, or a field. This happens because they start to form chlorophyll, a pigment that gives plants green color. So when you see green potato chips, it means they were made from one of these potatoes that were exposed to light for a longer time. But just because some green potato chips made it into the bag doesn't mean you should eat them. As it turns out, the green areas on potatoes and on chips are not good for you. Nothing's going to happen if you eat one or two of these green potato chips. But if you eat too much of a green potato, you might experience some discomfort. Despite their name, some oranges are not orange. Some initially contain large amounts of chlorophyll, which makes this citrus green-colored in the first place. As it matures and ripens, the chlorophyll slowly disappears as the fruit is exposed to cool temperatures. That's when it gets its color. But this is also why, in warm areas across the world, oranges remain green. If you've ordered something small from Amazon, like a pen, a single book, or something else, you might have got it in a box that seemed way too big for your item. And it's not an accident, nor random. It's because of their complex shipping algorithm. It takes into account the size of other packages going to the same place, as well as the size of the shipping vehicle. The small item gets a box size that will fit the space inside the vehicle together with other packages and keep boxes from sliding around. Physicist and inventor Percy Spencer discovered microwaves by accident. He was building a magnetron for some of his radar equipment. At one moment, he realized the chocolate bar he had been keeping in his pocket had begun to melt. He was curious about what was going to happen next. So, he directed microwaves at eggs, which exploded, and popcorn, which popped. This is how he discovered a great tool to heat food that uses less energy than a conventional oven. In its original version, the clay-like substance we call Play-Doh today was a wallpaper cleaner. It was invented and sold for the purpose of lifting soot off of wallpaper. At the time it first showed on the market, you could only get it in an off-white color. But later, they started selling it as a toy. The substance was produced in yellow, blue, and red. Today, you can get it in more than 50 colors. Bubble wrap had a somewhat different purpose at its beginning. It was supposed to be wallpaper. In the 1950s when it first showed up, two engineers decided to glue two shower curtains together. That's how they trapped small bubbles of air between them. They were trying to create some sort of textured wallpaper, but it didn't take off. A couple years later, IBM had to ship some data processors and needed something to protect them, which is when the phenomenon of bubble wrap came up. One study showed that one minute of popping bubble wrap is as calming as a 30-minute massage. Why don't electric fans cool the air? You could set a thermometer in front of it and choose a turbo mode. But the temperature won't go down. In fact, the temperature might even go up if you leave the thermometer next to the working parts thanks to the electric current. A fan won't cool the air, but it will cool you or any other object with water inside. An electric fan improves air circulation in a closed space. Plus, it speeds up evaporation which makes liquids, including the sweat on your skin, a bit cooler. Have you noticed pen caps have tiny holes on the top? It seems random at first, but it's actually a lifesaver. If you can accidentally swallow this cap, the hole ensures you can continue breathing because the cap won't completely block the airway. If you take a closer look at the night sky, you'll see stars come in different shapes and sizes. White is the most prevalent color, true but they sparkle in shades of red, blue, and yellow too. But you won't see a green star. It's not that stars don't emit green light, it's just that our eyes don't see it like that. Stars vary in colors when they burn at different temperatures. The hottest stars appear blue, while the coolest stars seem to burn in red hues, but they all shine in multiple colors. They emit different light wavelengths that represent various parts of the color spectrum. We can't all perceive those wavelengths separately. We only see the dominant light wavelength, which means the dominant color. 
So, stars of medium heat emit green photons in most cases, but they just don't appear green. When we try to process something that generates red, green, blue, and yellow photons at once, our eyes see it as white. That's the same reason why mid-temperature stars such as our sun appear white to us. Why do we blink? To moisten and cleanse the eye, that's for sure. Every time you close your eyelids, the tear glands secrete a salty substance that sweeps over the surface of your eye. It then flushes away all those tiny dust particles and also lubricates the exposed parts of your eyeball. We usually blink every 4 to 6 seconds unless the eyes are more irritated. Then, we blink more frequently to keep them moist and clean. But not just that. Blinking also helps our brain to reset. It has to process so many things all the time, so it's fair to give it a break from time to time. So blinking rescues our brain around 15 to 20 times per minute. When we shut our eyes, we help our brain to power down and take a very short but still effective mental break. That's why we blink more when we're in the middle of a task that demands some serious mental activity. Why do we have nails? They're generally made of a specific type of protein you can find in fur, hair, claws, and hooves. It's called keratin, and unlike claws, nails are flat and wide, so they're more effective at shielding the tips of toes and fingers from potential injuries. Fingernails not only protect sensitive areas but also provide a rigid backing so you can take and separate small objects more easily. How would you pick up a single jigsaw piece or peel a sticker from its backing without nails? It would be almost impossible without additional tools. Apes and monkeys use their feet for such delicate tasks too. Primates have probably evolved nails because they needed help with simple tasks, such as grasping branches tightly and removing ticks. Raspberries, blackberries, strawberries, and cherries are not berries. To classify a berry, they have to have three layers a protective outer one, a fleshy one in the middle, and finally, an inner part where you can find the seeds. Also, a plant must come from a flower with just one ovary and have two or more seeds. So, by this criteria, cranberries and blueberries are berries. Together with some more plants, you wouldn't expect to be in this category. Kiwis, bananas, watermelons, tomatoes, eggplants, and even peppers. You've probably heard, your ears and nose are those body parts that never stop growing. This happens because the effects of skin changes and gravity. Other parts of your body change in the same ways, but you can't see it as well as you can see what's happening with your nose and ears. Your body actually glows. It emits a super faint light that's at its strongest at around 3 to 4 p.m. The sad news is that this glowing is 1,000 times less intense than what your eyes can see. Humans are the only animals that have chins. Even our closest genetic relatives, gorillas and chimps, lack this small piece of bone that extends forward from the jaw. Their lower jaws slant down and back from their front teeth. Scientists still haven't figured out this mystery. The opinions about why people are made this way differ. Some researchers think chins help us chew our food. Others are sure they have something to do with speaking. A few of us think it's simply a special place to grow a goatee. The most abundant element in the human body is oxygen, at 65%. But it also contains lithium, cobalt, gold, and uranium. The rarest one of all is radium. On average, humans yawn 20 times a day, partially spontaneously, for example, when you're tired, but sometimes when someone yawns near you. Scientists think it could be a thing called social mirroring. Usually, when animals mimic each other, they recognize some action as useful, so they decide to do it too. With humans, it happens when someone crosses legs, laughs, smiles at you, or... <sighs> Your stomach acid breaks down the foods you eat and turns them into easy-to-digest particles. It also stops nasty pathogens and microbes that could make you sick. In fact, your stomach acid is so strong that it can even dissolve bone and metal. Don't start munching down on your soda cans, though. That's probably not going to end well. Your brain has more than 86 billion nerve cells. They're all joined together by 100 trillion connections. That's even more than the number of stars in the Milky Way galaxy. There's a good chance you can guess someone's name based on how they look. Researchers showed portrait photos to a group of people 
with four names written below. They were asked to choose the right name for this or that person. The law of chance says you'll guess it 25% of the time. But in this research, people got the names correct at a rate of 25 to 40%. And there were more than 94,000 faces shown. Let's say a man is called Bob. People will expect for him to have a rounder face than Tim. They expect Bob to be more jolly and ready to hang out with people. It has to affect his facial appearance in some way. A woman called Catherine can be considered more serious, studious, and concentrated. That could eventually influence her facial muscles as well. When ancient Romans flexed their biceps, they thought their muscles looked like mice. That's why the word muscle translates as little mouse in Latin. Your left lung is smaller than the right one because it shares space with your heart. Experts used to think that we can only distinguish 10,000 smells. In fact, a recent study found human beings can recognize one trillion smells. Millennials, or people born between 1981 and 1996, are more forgetful than older people. The main cause of their forgetfulness comes from higher levels of stress. So come on, dude, chill out, okay? Some scientists think that the purpose of fingerprints is a better grip, but others believe they're there to help wick water off them and allow the skin to stretch when needed to protect it from damage. There's also a theory saying that fingerprints improve the sense of touch. Hot coffee can taste better than cold coffee. Your taste bud receptors are most sensitive when your food is at or a little bit above room temperature. Hot coffee can then seem less bitter because taste buds that detect bitterness are more sensitive when the coffee is cold. The biggest molecule in the human body is the chromosome 1. A human cell has 23 chromosome pairs, and each chromosome 1 is made of 10 billion atoms. You inhale 25 sextillion molecules in just one breath. That's 25 followed by 21 zeros. When you're walking faster, at some point, you'll feel the natural urge to start jogging. Your body wants to have a stable state, whether you're running or walking. So, if you're walking fast, it will unconsciously force you to start running. One theory is, we use more energy when walking faster than running. So, that's one of the ways the body saves energy. Your pinky is a powerful little thing. Without it, your hand would lose a significant part of its power. Your index and middle fingers cooperate with your thumb to grab and pinch. And your pinky, together with your ring finger, provides grip strength. The fattiest organ in your body is your brain. Fat makes up at least 60% of its dry weight. This quality got the brain to the Guinness World Records. The organ contains around 25% of your body's cholesterol, which is vital for the brain's well-being. Your bones are four times harder than concrete. The strongest bone in your body is the femur. It can support up to 30 times the weight of a grown-up person. Even crazier is that our bones are made up of composite material, meaning they're both hard and elastic at the same time. Your fingernails grow twice as fast as your toenails. It would take 15 and a half months for your toenails to grow one inch, but only seven months for your fingernails to get this long. The outer layer of your skin is thicker on your feet than on other parts of your body. The heart has its own electrical system and can continue beating even when it's disconnected from the body. The vessels in your body are long enough to circle the earth twice or more. The idea that we use only 10% of our brains is a myth. At any given time, you use almost 100%. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to perform simple tasks, like drink a cup of coffee. More than 70% of your brain consists of water, and it needs 20% of your body's oxygen supply. The average lifespan of one eyebrow hair is four months. The body of a 110-pound person contains 40 tablespoons of salt. If you ironed out all the wrinkles in your brain and laid it flat, it would be the size of a pillowcase. The brain wrinkles as there's not a lot of room in the skull, so it folds over itself as it grows. By the way, don't do that pillowcase thing with your brain. Trust me on this one. We spend 40% of our life with our eyes closed. Most of that time is when we're asleep. But don't forget to count blinking too, or while driving. You produce around 85,000 pints of spit in your lifetime. That's enough saliva to fill around 500 bathtubs. Enough said. 
the highest blood flow isn't actually in your heart, and it's not in your brain either. It's in your kidneys. It's super hard for us to grasp just how small an atom is. But think of it this way. Your body is made up of a staggering seven octillion atoms. Yeah, doesn't that look like a seven being chased by a whole mob of zeros? For adults, the blood makes up seven to eight percent of the total body weight. About 55% of your blood is liquid plasma. The rest is red and white blood cells and platelets. They form clots and prevent bleeding. You can't swallow and breathe at the same time. The food you swallow and the air you breathe go down the same part of your throat at first. Only a bit deeper does the passage split into the esophagus for food and liquid and the trachea for air. When you swallow, your airway gets automatically closed off. This prevents you from accidentally inhaling food, but occasionally it still happens. There's a name for the growling sound that your stomach makes when you're hungry. It's called borborygmy. It takes six to eight hours for food to travel through your stomach and small intestine. That's because your body is trying to absorb all its nutrients. The idea that the tongue has flavor zones is a myth. All taste buds can detect five tastes, but some receptors are more responsive than others. Human beings are the only animals that willingly delay sleep. Just make sure you get enough. How can spiders survive when they lose a leg? When they're in a dangerous situation and try to run away, they can lose legs and regrow them only a couple of months later. They'll survive without any problem because most of the time, their legs come off at break points. Those are joints that contain muscles and constrict, which help spiders minimize blood loss. If they lose a leg at the part that comes before the break point, the spider still sheds it, but it will lose more blood. It will be harder for the animal to recover in this case. Speaking of spiders, have you noticed how they sometimes stay extremely still for a long time? They are motionless while waiting for potential prey to land in their web. When moving around, they waste energy and drive unnecessary attention to themselves. Either a hungry bird praying for a quick snack will see it, or a spider will remain hungry because flies will be less likely to come near their web. When spinning a web, they waste a lot of energy. Even after the web is finished, a spider may have to wait for days or weeks to catch something. So, it's important to save as much energy as possible. Hunting spiders are way more active, but the majority of them are nocturnal predators. They spend their days relaxing, tucked away under a rock or in a nest. Roast potatoes can stay hot for a really long time, and this mostly has to do with the fatty, starchy crust that's like some sort of an insulating layer. When you pre-boil a potato, this causes its starch granules to absorb water and swell until carb molecules seep out to produce this type of thick gel. Since potatoes are in the oven, high temperatures drive off moisture. This makes the gelatinized starch on the outside of the potato chunk and creates a crispy crust. This crust traps the heat inside. The fat from the baking tray collects in cracks too, and the heat-keeping structure stays strong. Birds don't get electrocuted while perching on power lines because it's not voltages that will harm them, but voltage differences, and electricity wouldn't flow without them. So, if you see a bird standing on a single power line at, for example, 35,000 volts, the lack of a voltage difference is something that keeps the animal safe. But if it accidentally extends its wings and touches another power line that's at a different voltage, it won't end well. That's the reason why electricity companies make sure there's plenty of space between the cables. Have you ever wondered why airplane pilots won't try to land on grass when the landing gear doesn't deploy? The grass may seem like a good solution at first because it's soft, true. But the surface will neither be smooth nor even. When pressure is high, landing on grass can lead to unpredictable movements and cause issues such as structure formation. That happens because of bouncing and unequal pressure. This can even result in fuel leakage and prevent the doors from opening. Bald heads tend to be shiny, even though the skin elsewhere on the human body isn't. Most of our skin is covered with tiny hairs that give it some sort of velvety peach fuzz look. With male pattern baldness, the hair follicles tend to shrink and turn into skin cells, which means there's no hair there at all. And the scalp is especially shiny due to the sebaceous glands. They produce and secrete some kind of oily matter that protects our skin. 
Sebaceous glands are located all across our skin, but the scalp has way more of them. So, this oil coats the skin, which is why it turns into a more reflective surface. House cats will rarely meow at one another, but they become chatty with humans, and this could be related to domestication. The process of taming cats and keeping them as pets started nearly 10,000 years ago. Before that, cats were pretty much loners. They rarely encountered other cats, so they didn't even have to use their voices to communicate with each other. Instead, they communicated through their sense of smell, which included things like rubbing against a certain object, for example, a tree. So they didn't even have to come face to face with other members of their species to send a message. And that's how they mostly communicate today as well. But humans don't have such a good sense of smell as cats. So these foxy creatures had to think of a way to send us a message and still get what they wanted from us, which turned out to be meowing. If you're planning a day trip to a desert, for example, the Sahara in North Africa, you're going to want to bring good sunscreen and a lot of water, of course, but also a snug sleeping bag if you're planning to spend the night there too. Deserts really become cold during the night. In the Sahara, temperatures go from an average high of 100 degrees Fahrenheit during the day to 25 degrees during the night. Such dramatic change happens because of two main factors, humidity and sand. Sand doesn't retain heat that well. When light and heat from the sun reach a desert, sand grains from the top layer absorb heat. But they release it back into the air relatively quickly. So during the day, the sand radiates the energy coming from the sun, which eventually heats the air and leads to extremely high temperatures. And during the night, the sand is quickly losing heat once again. But this time, there's no sunlight that would reheat the desert. That leaves the sand colder than before and leads to such low temperatures. In arid deserts such as the Atacama Desert in Chile and the Sahara, the humidity is extremely low. That means the amount of water vapor in the air is almost zero. Unlike sand, water does well to store heat. Water vapor in the air traps heat close to the ground. It's like you cover the ground with a huge blanket. That way, you stop it from dissipating into the atmosphere. Also, when the air has a high level of humidity, it requires more energy to heat up. That means it takes more time for that same energy to disappear and for the surroundings to get colder. Since there's almost no humidity in deserts, such areas can both quickly heat up and cool down. If you microwave water for tea, it will taste worse than when it's made with a kettle. That's because the temperature of the liquid is the main factor for a good tea. Water should reach a rolling boil before you pour it over tea leaves, whether they're loose or bagged. It's an easy thing to do with tea kettles, both the electric and stovetop varieties. When the burner or the electric heating element is on, the water at the bottom of the vessel warms up. As it's getting hotter, water through the rest of the kettle comes to the boiling point. A microwave doesn't heat from the bottom up. It creates electromagnetic waves that randomly jump around the box. You probably notice when you try to reheat leftovers, they end up partially frozen in some spots and extremely hot in others. The same will happen with water because it's hard to control microwave energy. Overheated liquid won't be good for tea either. When water goes above 212 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the boiling point for water, it can destroy the compounds that give a tea its specific flavor. Have you ever wondered why those electrical plugs most Americans use have holes in the prongs? The story dates back to the early 20th century when Harvey Hubble Jr. invented different types of electrical plugs. He started with the detachable electric plug, which was the first ever of that type. Some of his designs had prongs with indents, those aligned with tiny bumps inside the electrical sockets. Such an indent and bump system secured the prongs in place after people would insert a plug into a socket. At some point, these indents gave way to holes, which worked in the same way. But that's just part of the story. Most of the modern outlets don't even have bumps anymore. They keep plugs from falling out of the wall by using friction and pressure. Today, some manufacturers insert a rod through all the holes in a line of prongs. That's how they lock them in place while encasing them in plastic. Some also say the holes save metal which cuts costs of manufacturing in the long term.
The sun's heat is beneath our feet. Scientists have figured out that Earth's core is actually as hot as the surface of the sun, around 10,800 degrees Fahrenheit. One of the reasons it's so incredibly hot down there is because Earth is still shedding heat from when it was created billions of years ago. Also, when an object as big as Mars slammed into the young Earth, it not only created the moon, according to one theory, but melted the surface of the planet. A lot of that extra heat is probably still stored inside the core. But there's no need to worry. The planet's core is harder for us to access than it is to probe the surface of Pluto. In fact, chances are we may never develop technology that could physically reach the core. There's no air on the moon. But then, how can it be rusting? Scientists have discovered the presence of hermatite on the moon, and it's a kind of rust. A special NASA research instrument examined the light reflected off the moon's surface. It turned out that the composition of the satellite's poles was very different from the rest of it. The moon's surface is dotted with iron-rich rocks. But without oxygen and liquid water, rust can't appear. Solar winds add to the mystery. They bombard the moon with hydrogen. And hydrogen makes it much more difficult for hematite to form. Even though the moon doesn't have an atmosphere, it still has some trace amounts of oxygen. Its source is our planet's upper atmosphere. Earth also protects the moon from almost 100% of solar winds, although not all the time. And even though our natural satellite is bone dry, there might be water ice in the shadowed craters on its far side. A day on Uranus lasts 17 hours, 14 minutes, and 24 seconds. But get this, the planet has a tilt of around 98 degrees, and that makes a season on the gas giant last 21 Earth years. Mars has two moons, Phobos and Deimos. In the next 30 to 50 million years, Mars's gravitational forces will tear Phobos apart, and it will likely result in the formation of a ring around the planet. The Earth is the densest in the solar system. At the Earth's center, there's a core that takes up 15% of the planet's volume. It consists of two parts, the outer and the inner core. The inner core is a solid ball made of iron and nickel. Its radius is 760 miles, which makes 20% of the entire Earth's radius and 80% of the Moon's radius. The 1,500-mile-thick outer core is liquid. It also consists of iron and nickel, but it's not under enough pressure to be solid. Mars houses the biggest volcano in the solar system. While everything seems to be calm on Mars nowadays, in the past, some sort of force caused enormous volcanoes to form and erupt. One of these volcanoes is Olympus Mons. It's 16 miles tall, which is the height of three Mount Everests and 374 miles across, making it about the size of Arizona. The volcano grew to such a gargantuan size because of the weak gravity on Mars and the lack of tectonic plate movement. Gravity is not the same everywhere. The rocks, metals, and other minerals and substances that make up the planet are packed into the ground more tightly in certain places than in others. This has surprising consequences. Gravity varies slightly depending on where you are. You weigh 0.5% less standing at the equator than you do at the poles. In most cases, that's a difference of less than one pound. How high up you are also has an effect. So if you were at the top of Mount Everest, you'd also weigh slightly less. Just don't look down. Earth's toughest living thing is so small, you can't see it. Water bears, also known as moss piglets, are cute little creatures with eight legs and squashed up heads that are less than a hundredth of an inch in length. Despite their microscopic stature, they can basically survive anywhere. They prefer bits of wet moss or the bottom of a lake, but they won't complain if you put them somewhere really uncomfortable. They can endure extreme cold and incredible heat, and survive both huge pressure and high radiation. Some of the little bears once even managed to survive unprotected in outer space for 10 days without a problem. Huh, that is tough. They handle all these things by rolling up into a ball and hibernating, which reduces their need for oxygen and food. The moon's gravity is about 17% of that on Earth, 
If you weighed 200 pounds on our home planet, on the moon, your weight would decrease to a mere 34 pounds. You would also be able to carry stuff six times heavier than what you can carry on Earth. It would also be easier to walk on the moon's surface, but it would be more dangerous too. Your feet, inside a heavy spacesuit, would sink into the lunar soil up to six inches deep. But let's imagine you decided to skip the tedious process of walking by leaping through the air. Then you'd likely lose control of your jumps in no time. Plus, the moon's surface is littered with deep craters. It would be a tough feat to avoid all of them. You can see solar eclipses because even though the moon is 400 times smaller than the sun, it's also 400 times closer to Earth. So it's perfectly capable of obscuring the star. But in 50 million years, I won't be around then. The moon won't be able to block the sun completely because of the satellite's changing orbit. A full NASA spacesuit costs an unbelievable $12 million. Yeah, I can believe that. 70% of this hefty sum is for the control module and backpack. At the very center of Uranus, there's a rocky core, small, just half the Earth's mass. Compared to other planets, Uranus's core is rather cool, 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit. An ice mantle surrounds the solid core, and that's the largest portion of the planet, about 80%. It's also not the ice you might be thinking about. It's a hot, dense fluid made up of water, ammonia, ice, and methane, sometimes referred to as a water ammonia ocean. Uranus's atmosphere is mostly hydrogen and helium, but it has its blue-green color because of methane gas that absorbs the red light. The ocean on Jupiter is larger than any other in the solar system, but unlike Earth's oceans, it's made not of water, but of metallic hydrogen. The ocean's depth is a mind-blowing 25,000 miles. That's almost the same as the distance around Earth. Venus is a champ when it comes to volcanoes. The planet has about 1,600 major ones, but none of them is known to erupt. There's a supermassive black hole 250 million light years away from us. It hums the deepest sound ever detected from any object in the universe. It's 57 octaves lower than the middle C on your piano. That's one quadrillion times deeper than what we can hear. Mercury is a few billion years old. In 2016, scientists discovered some abnormalities on the planet's surface, showing that it's getting smaller. After more research, they found out that Mercury hadn't finished cooling down yet. There are planets that aren't bound to any star orbit and aimlessly wander through outer space. Among the most spectacular looking space objects are pulsars. Pulsars are a type of neutron star. They shoot out some of their material almost at the speed of light. Regular pulsars spin at a reasonable speed, between one-tenth to 60 times per second. But millisecond pulsars can spin at an impressive 700 times a second, which is way too fast for the human eye to even process. As they spin, they emit a beam of radiation from their axis that looks like the light from a lighthouse. Astronomers can notice pulsars when they face Earth, since it looks like a light being shined on our planet. When the light shines elsewhere, the pulsar can't be seen. Our Sun is insanely massive. Want some proof? 99.86% of all the mass in the solar system is the mass of the Sun. In particular, the hydrogen and helium it's made of. The remaining 0.14% is mostly the mass of the solar system's eight planets. Saturn's rings are very thin compared to its size. If you had a scale model of the planet that was three feet wide, the rings would be 10,000 times thinner than a razor blade. Even though Venus is the hottest planet in our solar system, it still has snow, but not what you'd expect. It snows metals and rains acid. Not a great vacation spot. So, Alexander the Great, one of the most famous figures in ancient history, was apparently a big fan of one summer treat beloved by many to this day. 
Marco Polo, the Italian explorer and writer, is said to have brought back from Asia a recipe resembling sorbet, a frozen dessert made by mixing sugar-sweetened water with different types of flavoring. This dessert, which was later named cream ice, was a frequent treat at the court of Charles I of England in the 17th century. In France, it was Catherine de' Medici who introduced the beloved frozen dessert soon after she married Henry II. The frozen treat became available for the general public somewhere in the 1660s, when a Sicilian man blended milk, cream, butter, and eggs at Café Procope, the first known café in Paris. Thomas Jefferson himself had a preferred recipe for ice cream, which took a staggering 18 steps to complete. Ice cream has become so important in popular culture that it even has its own laws and regulations to accompany it, to make sure ice cream is always produced with its certain levels of quality. Not every frozen dessert you see out there is, in fact, ice cream. To be commercialized under this name, the Icy Delight needs to contain a minimum of 10% dairy milk fat and mustn't weigh less than 4.5 pounds per gallon. Genuine ice cream doesn't actually need to be too fluffy. In technical terms, that means it must have no more than 100% overrun. So, to get to that specific texture we've all come to know and love, the ice cream base needs to be sufficiently whipped, but only to a certain percentage. Specifically, for every gallon of ice cream base, the end products must not exceed 2 gallons after whipping. Your favorite summer dessert can yet again be broken down into many other subcategories, like reduced-fat ice cream, low-fat ice cream, or non-fat ice cream, based on, what do you think, fat percentage. To have a solid idea of what you're ordering each time, it's best to look at the nutritional information of each product. One interesting type of frozen dessert is gelato. Although it literally translates to ice cream in Italian, there are differences between the two again based on regulations on milk fat content. Gelato normally has less milk fat than ice cream officially should have, but since it has a low overrun, about 20 to 30 percent, the end result is still dense and rich in texture. The Italians also mention that gelato shouldn't have less than 3.5 percent of fat. If this doesn't seem complicated enough, the French also bring their own twist to the dessert. French ice cream, also known as frozen custard, apart from the standard ingredients, also needs to have eggs added to the mixture, with no less than 1.4% egg yolk. You've probably mislabeled many other food items, like say raspberries, as they're actually a member of the rose family, along with cherries, apricots, plums, pears, apples, peaches, or blackberries. They are added to this category based on their flowers. They bloom in five equal petals arranged around a central core. Bananas are considered berries, while strawberries aren't since they belong to the same rose family. We also share about 50% of our DNA with bananas, which explains why both bananas and certain attractive people can both have appeal. Another common misconception, white chocolate isn't actually chocolate since it doesn't contain any chocolate solids. It's made only from a mixture of sugar, milk products, vanilla, lecithin, and cocoa butter. Parents all over the world don't try to convince their kids to eat broccoli for no reason. On a calorie-by-calorie basis, it turns out that broccoli has nearly as much protein in it as a steak. Now, I'm not convinced parents actually know that, but given the low-fat content, broccoli has many other health benefits as opposed to meat. We now see it as the mandatory companion for fries, but at some point in time, ketchup was actually considered to have healing properties. In the 1880s, a doctor based in Ohio indicated that tomatoes could help treat digestive issues, publishing a ketchup-like formula that was later transformed into a pill. Hey, you want to have a pill with those fries? Speaking of french fries, it turns out one of the most popular side dishes in the world isn't actually French. Potatoes served this way actually originated in Belgium, but they're called that because of how they're cut. And maybe also because the name Brussels sprouts was already taken. I'm almost certain there's a jar of peanut butter somewhere in your cupboard. But I'll bet you didn't know how valuable it actually was. And I'm not talking about peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Studies have shown that Americans go through enough peanut butter to coat the floor of the Grand Canyon each year. Just to be a bit more precise here, that's about 500 million pounds. 
Hey, if somebody did that on YouTube, I'd watch. The pink coloring of salmon isn't always like that by default. Wild salmon is pink due to a large amount of shrimp they consume natively. Farm-raised salmon, however, is generally white, so producers need to add plant-based pigments to get that light pink hue. Carrots weren't originally orange either. The red-yellow tint we are now familiar with comes from a genetic mutation of the well-known vegetable that occurred somewhere in the 16th century. Carrots were initially white or purple. Just like you add ketchup to the side of fries, you're most likely having a dab of wasabi with every plate of sushi. Well, it's most certainly dyed horseradish. The Japanese alternative to horseradish is quite expensive. That's why 99% of restaurants in the U.S. actually use regular horseradish instead. You may see them packed together in the supermarket, but red, green, and yellow peppers aren't actually the same vegetable. You'd need different types of seeds to be able to grow them individually, as they're each their own type of plant species. Did you know one in four hazelnuts ends up in a Nutella jar? The creamy spread is so popular that scientists are looking into ways to grow hazelnuts in labs to counteract the global shortage. That's something to think about when you ask for an extra topic. Sure, there's an expiration date on each bottle of water, but the water itself doesn't actually expire. The date mentioned there is, in fact, for the bottle itself, since the plastic can eventually leak harmful substances into the water. Ever wondered why airplane food sometimes tastes bland? The chef may not always be to blame. The altitude you're flying at has some effects on your body chemistry, making you taste things differently. You've added it to a salad at least once, but you may be surprised to know that cilantro and coriander are not, in fact, the same thing. Coriander is what the dried seeds are called, while the leaves and the stems go by cilantro. So now you know. For all the fruit lovers out there, scientists came up with a fruit salad tree. Yep, that's right, a tree that can grow different types of fruit at the same time. They were developed in Australia and can support up to six different types of fruit. There's a stone fruit variation that features peaches, plums, nectarines, apricots, and peach cots, and a citrus variation for those who prefer lemons, limes, mandarins, oranges, or even tangelos, pomelos, and grapefruits. You most likely avoid it because it can give you bad breath. But garlic is considered one of the most nutrient-dense foods out there. A single clove of garlic can contain 2% of your vitamin B6 for the whole day. Studies have shown that the chemical that gives garlic its distinctive flavor, called allicin, is good for your health. The only type of food that never spoils when stored properly is honey. Or at least, the only one we've discovered so far. That's because it contains a high amount of sugar and has a low moisture content. An enzyme created by bees also helps do the trick, as it can suppress any bacterial growth. Of course, if you store your honey the wrong way and expose it to additional moisture, it can go bad. But honey that is sealed and stored correctly technically has no expiration date. Now, if you're just starting out with your cooking skills, you'll be pleased to know mushrooms can't be overcooked. That's because they contain a polymer called chitin. This chemical allows them to remain tender, even if you cook them from a few minutes to up to an hour. Hey, just add some butter and garlic. Nobody will ever know. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends.